We can't talk about bacterial resistance to antibiotics without talking about bacteria. So we need to understand what they are and how they work a little bit before we can move any further. So what are they? <laughs> well, they're single-celled. You get one cell. That's it. All living things are made of cells. Every living thing is made of cells. You have something like 30 million or 30 trillion cells in your body. Bacteria have one. That's the whole works. And there was called a prokaryote. So prokaryote, have you heard the term prototype? What's a prototype? It's an unfinished product. It's the first one you build. It's the sample. Like, oh, I have this idea. I'm going to make a new go-kart. And I think I could do this. So you like go out to the barn, you find a bunch of crap, and you throw it together, and you have this thing, and it's not real smooth, and it's not real polished. You're going to improve on it. That's your prototype. It's the first one you build. Prokaryotes are the first kind of living things that probably existed on this planet. They're really primitive. They're really simple. They don't have all the fancy stuff that your cells have, and they are all single-celled. What do they have? I'm glad you asked. Let's go ahead and... What do bacteria have? What do prokaryotes have? Well, they've got something that defines inside from outside. There's got to be some boundary between in your cell and not in your cell. And the easiest way to think about that boundary is like a Ziploc bag. You put jello in this bag, for instance. Yeah. That would work. That bag is just going to keep something on the inside and something on the outside. That is the cell membrane. It's sometimes called the plasma membrane. Your cells have it. Bacterial cells have it. The cells of trees have it. The cells of um, earthworms and this colia plant have it. The cells of fish have it. The cells of ladybugs and Dinosaurs had it, chicken cells have it. All cells in all living things have a plasma membrane. It's basically what keeps inside in and outside out. And it controls what comes in and out of the cell. Pretty important. Now, your cells just have that plasma membrane. And that butts right up against the plasma membrane of the next cell. But bacteria are a little bit different in that bacteria also have an extra layer. Because remember, you've got lots of cells all packaged neatly in this you know, very interesting body of yours. Bacteria just have that plasma membrane, and so they need some other layer of protection. And so what they have, and you should be writing this down, what they have is this extra wall around their cell. If you know what we call the wall around the cell, you'll never guess. Cell, cell wall! Hey, good. I would almost think that you guys had had this before. Bacteria are pretty simple. They got a plasma membrane, they got a cell wall. We said that there's a molecule that every single living thing on the planet uses to pass on genetic information. Do you remember what that was? DNA. You've got DNA. Bacteria have DNA. Earthworms have DNA. Strawberries have DNA. Bananas have DNA. This plant has DNA. The algae in the pond have DNA. Maple trees have DNA. Your dog has DNA. Cows have DNA. Does this desk have DNA? Yeah. No. It's not a living thing. Um, now, if this desk was made of wood, would there be DNA in the wood? Yeah, because it came from a living thing. So anything that's a living thing is going to have DNA. So let's represent that DNA. It is a really long molecule, but just if you t just like... If you were to take a really long piece of thread or yarn that's made up of a couple of strands. Okay, so it is a loop of DNA. The reason I mention that is because very often when we draw that, we'll draw, okay, well, there's the loop of DNA. Well, that looks an awful lot like something that's closed in, and it's not. It's just a long strand that's looped back on itself like a little bracelet. So that's the DNA. There's not a whole lot else here. There are a couple things, and we'll talk more about what these are for later. I'm going to make these guys little blue spots. We have some things called ribosomes. Does anybody remember? So you did some cell stuff. Do you remember what ribosomes do? 
Anybody? Oh, yeah. It's where we make protein. Your cells have ribosomes. Uh, bacterial cells have ribosomes. Earthworm cells have ribosomes. Maple tree cells have ribosomes. Dandelion cells have ribosomes. That fern cells have ribosomes. Fish and aquatic invertebrates, they all have ribosomes. It's not very fancy, is it? Your cell's way fancier. Plant cells are way fancier. I mean, plant cells have got these cool things that hold water and they sometimes hold toxic chemicals like the poison ivy. <laughs> holds a nice little oil that it can release out of its cells. Now every now and then we do get a bacterial cell that will have some other stuff. Sometimes we get a bacterial cell, I'll make this orange because I can, that has a long whip tail on it or a couple of long whip tails. And those help it get around. Where do we find bacteria? Other than everywhere. It's on your skin right now. It's in your mouth right now. It's in your gut right now. It's in the pond right now. Don't freak out. It's probably in your water right now, unless it's been, well, even if it's been recently boiled, it would still have chunks of dead bacteria in it, but that's okay. We don't care. Dead bacteria is fine. Um, how, you know, if you remember back to the movie, Addie was in the hospital, and her mom was saying, you know, she's actually got bacteria in her bloodstream. How does bacteria move around her bloodstream? How does bacteria move around the pond? These things are called flagella, okay? So these are called flagella. And some bacteria do have flagella and those help them move around. They get them, they move around in liquids that way. Um, there are a few other structures that we occasionally see like cilia on cells, which are little short bristly hairs but we don't, we're not going to talk too much about them. Okay, so we've got this really pretty basic organism. They've been on the planet a very long time, much longer than humans. They reproduce asexually, and their offspring are pretty much identical to themselves. We'll talk about the exceptions to that. And they do that through binary fission. Now, that's a good thumbnail. The question, the thing that I circled in purple down here, is this the same as a virus? Who here has had a I asked you already if you had had a bacterial infection, and I said, you've probably all had a bacterial infection. Anybody know that they've had a virus? I know I have. Anybody had an immunization against a virus? I haven't gotten mine yet this year. You Wait. have. Wait, what? You know, got, I haven't got a project. You've got great nonverbals, Connor. Um, the thought process is all very clear on your face. I like that. Uh, makes it easy for me. So these bacteria are living things. They reproduce themselves. They, you know, can invade your body. They can do things. What do they do? Do they have parties? Do they have exciting social lives? Do they think deep thoughts? No. You know what they do? They reproduce. Then they die. <laughs> The new ones then reproduce, then they die. Then the new ones reproduce, then they die. I mean, it's really, there's, you don't want to think too deeply about the meaning of life if you're a bacteria, and you can't think too deeply about the meaning of life because you don't have a brain, you're a single cell, and all you can do is make more of yourself, maybe make some proteins, chair down, reproduce and die. It's not really much of a life, is it? It isn't a life. It's, it, well, it is a life. It's a living thing. Yeah. How's it living? Oh, that's... Well, because they're a single-celled organism. What does it take to be a living thing? Have a heartbeat. No. Trees don't have Do trees have heartbeats? <laughs> they're not living. Yeah, they are. Really? <laughs> well, okay. Are they made of cells? Touche. Are they made of cells? No. Yeah. Can they reproduce? Are there baby trees? Yeah. Yeah. But that was from Johnny Apple. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, dear boy. That was just a joke. Yeah, I got that. I'd be more worried if I thought it wasn't. Um, <laughs> so the seeds that were planted by John Chapman through this area and all the way into Iowa were the offspring of apple trees. True. True, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? It's earth-shattering. Earth earth-shaking, mind-shattering. 
So anything that can reproduce itself, that can uh, make a copy of itself, that is made of cells, it's a living thing. I'm actually really glad you brought that up. That's a perfect segue. Because the question I have for you is this. What's the difference? So, okay, if something makes me sick, does it matter if it's a bacteria or a virus? Yes. Well, to the fact that I'm going to need a lot of Kleenex and a lot of orange juice and a nice couch for a few days, no. But it does matter. So is this the same as a virus? Well, let's shrink down our little, our little bacteria here. And I'm going to label this nicely bacteria. And then I'm going to draw you what looks like a spaceship. <laughs> you know what that is? It's a virus. It's smaller than a bacteria, it's a virus. And all it's got is a capsule and a piece of DNA. But guess what? It doesn't know how to copy its own DNA. It can't reproduce. So it's not even considered really a cell. It's considered a capsule. The structure is different from a cell. Makes you sick. Um, influenza, the flu, is a virus. Sinus infection, usually bacterial. You've got bacteria in your sinuses multiplying, having a big old party, making babies in your sinuses. Your body's attacking them, hence you're spewing green snot out of your nose. I know, it's before lunch. I'm sorry. Viruses do some different stuff. They can't make their own babies. Do you know who makes more? their babies? I'm the, glad you asked. The bacteria. No, you. What? I'm you. I'm a you, daddy. Alex, I'm a daddy. are a virus. Well, your cells are, yes. <laughs> Viruses hijack your own cells. Your cells know how to reproduce. Has anybody here ever had a cut that healed? So you had a cut that healed? No, it's still there. Still there? Okay. Yeah. Every cut you've ever gotten, oops, sorry, in your entire life is still there? Yes. Really? You're in amazingly good shape. You must not fall down a lot. I fall down a whole lot more than that. Okay. If you've had a cut heal, your body knows how to reproduce your cells. Because your body built new cells to fill the gap for the cells that were damaged. Your body knows how to do that. Viruses take advantage of that and they hijack your cells and they force your cells to reproduce for them. Ooh. Because of this, we don't consider viruses to be living things. Because they can't reproduce for themselves. If you can't reproduce for yourself, you're not considered, don't touch scientific equipment that you have not been assigned to touch. Is that clear? That was in your rules. If you have impulse control problems, I'll move you away from the table. Thank you. Okay, so viruses are not considered living things. Now, what did we say about antibiotics? What's the root of that? They kill off antibio, antibio against life. We should keep that in mind. We should file that little bit of information away. Okay, so now let's go back to our friends, the bacteria. Let's go back to our friends, the bacteria. What do the bacteria have to do to survive? That's what we're going to talk about right now. So I'm going to read it while you copy. Then I will shut up while you copy. Screenshotting is not the same as typing or writing. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit. What do bacteria have to do to survive? Stay wet. Homeostasis means maintaining stable conditions. Maintain their water balance. Not lose water to the environment. Not dehydrate. Stay at the right temperature. Again, homeostasis. Not too hot, not too cold. Too hot will change the proteins in their cell wall like you're cooking an egg. Too cold can freeze them, and their cell walls will burst. And number three, make more bacteria. This requires copying DNA and making more cell wall proteins and more cytoplasm. This doesn't mean that an individual bacterium will survive, but that the species will. I'll shut up while you copy. Okay, we've got the ocean. Early things on the planet, definitely... 
arose in some sort of wet environment. If you're this little bacteria and you've got jelly-like water stuff inside you, that plasma membrane is not a perfect bag. Stuff leaks out of it. So if you're a little bacteria, you could dry up. If you dry up, you die. The cell wall helps. Bacteria having cell walls helps to keep a little bit of that water in. But if conditions get too extreme and they dry up, that's it. They're done. It's called homeostasis. All living things. You, a bacteria, an earthworm, a maple tree, a blue whale, a ladybug, um, the cricket who's living in one of my plants, um, a spider, a mouse, your dog, dandelions, fish, everything can only exist within a certain range of conditions. And you have to maintain that range. Um, how many of you know the temperature at which humans start to see brain damage? Body temp. 108. 108. 101's nothing. 108 you start to see brain damage. It's, it's like a car that's overheating. Has anybody ever seen a car overheat? Yeah. yeah. Don't do it. Don't cook the engine. Human body temp, core temp gets to 108, you're going to start cooking the engine. By which I mean the brain. It's like you'll lose. You'll lose cognitive function. People who've experienced fevers over 108 very often come out with brain damage. Um, where that brain damage occurs, what part of their life is affected depends on a lot of factors. So you could have motor issues, as if, as if you had had a stroke. You could have memory issues or cognitive impairments. But yeah, once, once you get above a certain temperature, you're going to start to basically lose function. You don't want to do that. Um, anybody know the temperature at which you're at risk of death on the low end? Isn't it 48? Negative 50. No, 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 no. Well, you're talking outside temperatures. Body temp, well, negative 28 is no better. Body temp of about 88, core temp. So 10 degrees, and you're at very serious risk of death. That's called hypothermia. Your body temp drops into the mid-80s. You're at very serious risk. Now, you don't see the kind of brain damage you see in elevated heat. Um, paramedics have a saying, they're not dead until they're warm and dead. Um, meaning people who've experienced very low temperatures, there's some preservation of brain function. And once you get them warmed up, they may or may not make it. But, yeah, I mean, there's a range of temperatures you can exist in. Period. Wait, so it's pretty much from... Like well, what's normal human body temp in Fahrenheit? Do you know? What's a normal temperature? 98.6 is usually given as average. Some of us are a little bit low on average. Some of us are a little bit high on average. On average, it's around 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Normal body temp. Now, again, your, your temp climbs to 108 Fahrenheit. You're probably going to see brain damage. At 113 Fahrenheit, that is irreversible. You're dead. You will die. It, it's not making it up. Um, if your body temp drops below about 88 Fahrenheit, you will die. No options. Probably not coming back from that. Bacteria are no different, though the range of temperatures they can exist in tend to be a little bit different than ours. Okay? So they have to maintain their water balance. They also have to stay at the right temperature. This is all homeostasis. What does that sound like, homeostasis? When you did your pre-knowledge on that, were there any words that you tied to that? Home. Home? Okay. What is home? Hopefully a safe, stable place. Anybody tie homo to it? Same? Like homogenized milk? Mm -mm. No? Okay. Or homosexual, which is same-sex attraction versus heterosexual, which is opposite sex attraction, different sex. So homo, homeo, same. Same conditions, consistent conditions. That's all any living thing really wants. Stability. Stasis, stable. 
maintaining the same conditions. Bacteria have to have that. So, what's going on over there? Uh, you're killing bacteria. Well, <laughs> we've definitely got evaporation. If we have a surface up here, we're probably going to see some condensation. I'm attempting to boil water, though. It's happening really slowly. Anybody here ever hard boil an egg? Oh, looks different when you're done, huh? Everything? Shell. Yeah. It's because you cook their proteins. Change their proteins. Bacterial cell walls are made of protein. Guess what happens if you boil them? You got hard boiled bacteria. Fortunately, yum. Fortunately, hard boiled bacteria can't reproduce. <laughs> they can't cause infection. Anybody here? Does anybody here have a parent who boils the dish sponges? periodically. I stick mine in the microwave usually for three and a half minutes and if they don't catch on fire they're pretty sanitized afterwards. Um, ask me how I decided on three and a half rather than four. <laughs> Oops. Um, it's okay we keep a fire extinguisher in the kitchen. So um, when you heat a bacteria you kill it. Just like if we heat you above a certain point we would kill you. Now a lot of bacteria are able to tolerate really low, low temperatures. So putting things in the freezer doesn't necessarily kill them because a lot of them are able to survive that. They have a wider range of things they can deal with. Think about how fragile, what delicate little flowers we are. 88 to 113 Fahrenheit, seriously, that's nothing. There are bacteria that can tolerate like 20 Fahrenheit to 150 Fahrenheit and come out dancing. Okay, they can't dance, they don't have legs, they're single-celled organisms, I get it. But they're fine. They have to stay wet, they have to stay the right temperature. Or what happens? They die! All together now. Too hot, too cold, they die! There are a lot of ways for a bacteria to die. We're gonna talk about a lot of them. Um, what else do they have to do? They have to make more copies of themselves. Now, does that preserve their own life? No, just like for humans. If you have kids, is that a guarantee you're going to live? No. no. But if enough humans have kids, it guarantees that the species goes on. If your dog is fixed and never had puppies, does that change their lifespan? Probably, well, we could get into the veterinary issues around that. Probably not much. If all dogs in one generation were fixed and none of them had puppies, what would happen to the species? No more dogs. No more dogs. So. As long as some bacteria are reproducing, we aren't killing off the species. What I'm going to have you do now in the few minutes that we've got left is pull out your vocab packet, look it over, and see if there are any words that you feel like you have a better grip on now than you did pre previously. Okay, so do your part C's.